Hidden History is brought to you by G2A.com and our supporters at Patreon. After months of anticipation, Far Harbor is finally here, bringing with it an entire island to explore new characters to meet and a complex fresh story. Sure, any new Fallout DLC is great, since it allows us to spend a little more time in the wasteland, but Far Harbor aims to be a little more than that. In fact, it is the largest DLC that Bethesda, as a company, has ever released. Much like the main game though, every aspect of Far Harbor is packed with references and easter eggs you may not have noticed. Let's start with a pretty simple one. As many of you probably know, the town of Far Harbor isn't actually called Far Harbor, or at least it wasn't in the old world. A close look at the island's welcome sign shows that wear and tear has caused the lettering to fade. Many of the other pre-war signs reveal that the city's original name was actually Bar Harbor. In fact, the whole area is based closely off the real world coastal area of Bar Harbor in Maine. Even the image on the game's cover is based on a real dock near the centre of the town. The people of Bar Harbor are pretty thrilled about being represented in the game too, with local businesses hoping to get an extra boost in this season's summer tourism. Martha Searchfield, the executive director of the town's Chamber of Commerce, even weighed in on the game saying, Bar Harbor is the perfect place to be in an apocalypse, because zombies can't swim, and you've still got access to boats and fishing. Moving on to some of the new characters in Far Harbor, Bethesda seems to have pulled inspiration from a lot of places, and of course there's some great easter eggs as well. If you take a trip down to Rock Point Camp, located in the southwest of the island, you'll come across some holotapes that feature a man named Bray Husky giving instructions to three other men named Rowan, Bron, and Luke. This may seem random, but it's actually a subtle reference to the Wyatt family a famous group of WWE wrestlers who have the same first names as the men in the tape. It gets even more in depth too, since the last name, Husky, refers to the original ring name of Bray Wyatt, who started out under the name Husky Harris, so clearly there are some big WWE fans at Bethesda Studios. Making a small transition from professional wrestling to poetry, there is also a reference to one of Maine's most beloved writers to be found in the game. One of Far Harbor's newest companions, Old Longfellow, gets his name from Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, one of the most popular poets of the 20th century. His famous main home is even a popular tourist destination and is located very close to Bar Harbor in the nearby town of Portland. Oh, and this isn't the only time Longfellow has gotten a shout out in Fallout 4. His poem, Paul Revere's Ride, is also cleverly referenced in the main game. Check out our old Boston Landmarks video if you'd like to see more about that. If you climb to the steeple of the church, you'll come across two lanterns. This is a reference to Henry Wadsworth Longfellow's poem, Paul Revere's Ride. But it's clear in setting the new game in New England, Bethesda researched and embraced the history of the region to a staggering degree, giving us an almost living futuristic version of its locations. And speaking of writers from Maine, there's probably no way that Bethesda could set Far Harbor there without giving a shout out to beloved author Stephen King, who sets most of his books in that state. To the west of Radiant Crest Shrine, you'll find a reference to one of his famous novels, Pet Cemetery. Not only is there a creepy graveyard in the game that looks a lot like the one King describes, it's also filled with legendary mole rats who seem to have risen from the dead. What cements the reference though is a picture of a cat you find in one of the tombstones. Since the plot of the novel revolves around the death of a main character's pet cat, Church. Another new Far Harbor character, Kazumi Nakano, has a name that's not actually a reference, but is still pretty clever. That's because in Japanese, Kazumi means mist, which cannot be an accident, considering that mist and fog are one of the main features of Far Harbor. Lastly, we have another little easter egg, this time referencing the movie Titanic. Located in the lake just north of the nucleus, you will find the skeletons of two lovers, one of which is lying on a floating door. This is a recreation of the infamous death scene in the film, where Leonardo DiCaprio's character heroically sacrifices himself for his love interest, Rose, by letting her be the only one to stay alive by floating on the door. Which, let's be honest, 
probably could have fitted both of them on it. In the movies, Rose survives. In Fallout's version though, well, it doesn't look like it ended well for any of them. Now for some comments. This week we have a post from Mark Henderson, who let us in on a really obscure hidden fact about the Corvega. One terminal entry in the Red Rocket truck stop reads, Coolant leak in one of those new 2077 Corvega Coupe. They don't make them like they used to. This is a very clever reference to the one of the cars that the Corvega is based on, the Chevy Vega. The 70s version of the vehicles were infamous for their coolant leaking problems. The problem was so bad that popular mechanic magazines would later say that the car nearly destroyed General Motors. Apparently the Corvega had similar problems. Our shoddy comment today comes from Hayden Will, who says, Hidden history, the iBot was modelled after the first Soviet satellite, Sputnik. We, we had heard of that, yeah. This is actually a pretty good comment. Not shoddy at all. But the problem is after doing this show for 68 episodes and reading this fact approximately 600,509 times in the past year, Hidden History's writer, Graham, now breaks out into a cold sweat at even the mention of the word Sputnik. It's not your fault, Hayden. But if you've got some facts you think we don't know, please leave us a comment below. Moving on to trivia. Last week we asked you what mod inspired the new Doom's Glory Kills melee system, and the answer was B. Brutal Doom. This week we have a question about a returning character who plays a major role in Far Harbor. What was the name of the criminal that killed Nick Valentine's fiance? A. Hank Summers B. Andrew Station C. Billy Thomas or D. Edward Winter Tell your answer in the comment section below and while you're down there why don't you drop us a like and check out some of our other videos. If you want to check out my Fallout 4 Far Harbor review you can check it out on screen right now. And uh, another hidden history while you're at it? Maybe? Yeah? Okay. And I'll see you guys next week.